Welcome back to the My Pro Golfer channel. Today we're going to navigate ways around the short game area for you scratch players and for you high handicappers. So gang, I hope you're enjoying this series on how to play golf for a scratch player and a high handicap player. And today we're gonna to go over a couple scenarios that will help you learn when to execute what shot so that you can kind of navigate based on your skill level what kind of shot you should take on. For many of you, hitting a shot high lofted over a bunker can be intimidating. And so I'm gonna take you through a couple scenarios on how to play this based on your ability level and the best chance to make the lowest score on the hole. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. Here at My Pro Golfer, you know we like to keep things simple. And today, I've got a special gift for you to help you never miss a five foot putt again. Click the link below and download today. So gang, let's start with you high handicappers. As you know, the quickest way to a certain point is straight. We don't want to do a whole lot of excess movement, but we want to make sure that we utilize whatever club in the bag that we can that makes the most sense to make the smallest number on any given hole and shot. And so we've got this bunker in front of us today, which for you high handicaps is probably a little bit intimidating. You have to be really precise in the functional movement patterns to get that ball to do what you want to do. And a couple things I want you to think about is remember when we talk in our past playlists on short game, we want to try to keep the ball as low as possible. So our functional lowest club would be your putter. And right here we've got a bunker in front of us, but both lips are pretty even. There's not a lot of dig in there. There's going to be a sl subtle slope in and a subtle slope out. So the simplest way to get the ball in line with your hole is to putt it aggressively through the bunker. So let's just give that a shot. Remember, it's gonna dictate if you can do this based on the conditions of the course. So because we don't have a high lip in front of us and we don't have a whole lot of weird lip in, in, in the back of the bunker here, we're gonna be able to execute this shot. Now, one thing I will say is when you check the bunker, if it's got some deep groove marks or something, that's gonna slow it down just as if you were hitting it on the beach. But right now I'm gonna navigate just slightly right of that footprint to be able to get this ball to run all the way onto the green. Take your normal setup. You're gonna to need to hit the ball to go that full 40 yards or so. So you're gonna to have to give it a pretty good whack, but let's just see if we can get it through the shot. So as you can tell there, I was able to skip it right through the sand and get it on the green. Now, if I can't do that, but I'm really gonna struggle here with hitting this shot over the bunker. Uh, my next best option, because the bunker does bring a third or even fourth potential shot into play, I'm gonna want you to putt it right of the bunker and then you get yourself closer to the hole, but then give yourself another chance to putt up there. It adds a shot, but it potentially doesn't add multiple shots that could happen if you get yourself stuck in a bunker. All right, see, so for you scratch players, this shot is going to not be as difficult, especially the one back there to that back flag, because you've got some space to go in there. So what I want to teach you guys today is the shorter shot that's a little bit more difficult, a little bit more precise. We still have to go over the bunker, but it's, it's a little bit tighter, a little bit crispier. So if I'm going all the way back to that back left flag there, I can use like my 56 or some sort of mid, mid wedge and I can make a shorter, more back behind my stance swing and send that ball low and bouncing because there's really no concern for you as a scratch player, as a, as a low handicap player, of getting that ball stuck in the ground because it's going to come out hot and crispy and going. But when you have to be a little bit more subtle in your stroke and hit something higher and softer, that bunker can bring that little bit of an, uh, sort of a nerve-wracking shot because you don't want to be that guy as a good player that dumps one in the bunker here but even on tour you see that happening from time to time so let's talk a little bit about lies we obviously want a decent lie before we attempt this shot we're going to want to utilize more of the bounce so the bounce of, for those of you that don't know is this 
part underneath the club face. And if you have a lot of bounce, it's going to literally bounce more. You have less bounce, it's gonna slide under. What you don't wanna do on this shot is open it up so much that the bounce gets the club up on the, up on the ball and more towards the equator of the ball. You wanna open up enough so it has a little bit more of a pinchy sound so that they, it'll have more club grab than bounce. So if you have a 60 degree with four degrees of loft, that's probably optimal for this shot. As you know from videos in the past, this is an eight degree bounce, so I'm not gonna open it wide open. I'm just gonna open it enough to make sure that that leading edge still grabs the ball first. So what you want is a real wider stance to get that path to be shallow, really crispy and quick, short little movement pattern so you can make sure that you create good contact first. If you brush the shot and you hit the turf a couple of different times and it hits in the same spot, attempt this shot. If you're all over that mark, don't attempt this shot. It just means that you're not precise enough to be able to hit the kind of precision on the wedge that's gonna clarify this shot up and over this bunker. So again, a little wider, just a little bit open to my target line because the club face is just a little bit open because we don't want too much bounce on my 6008. And then we wanna really stay with the shot. We don't wanna quit, just nice and fluid and relaxed. It should put plenty of spin on the shot and that way you can execute a very difficult shot simply. Hey, just want to remind you to not forget on getting your free gift below on how to never miss a five foot putt. All right, you high handicappers, I know what you're thinking. You're looking at me and you're like, I don't want to putt the ball over there and putt the ball over there. I want to attempt this shot of getting over the bunker. And so one of the things that's really important here is that remember that as a scratch player, I play with less forgiving clubs. And so what I want you to do is get yourself something that's more forgiving, kind of like, um, this, uh, this Cleveland CBX2 would be a great option. It's got much bigger flange. You can see that in there. That, that cavity right there is gonna give you some help lifting the ball up in the air. So making sure that you have the right equipment to pull this shot off better will be absolutely essential. And so this has got 12 degrees of bounce. That means if I lay that sucker flat, I'm way off the ground with my leading edge. So we don't wanna try to attempt that shot opening up the club face. We wanna just make it square. And so what's available to you? We don't wanna hit the little chipper we just hit to get it up by that close flag. We wanna just kinda of dump it in a bigger quadrant on the green to give ourselves the best chance of having one more putt to make versus doing it in two and utilizing the fringe or the fairway. So let's talk about that. We don't wanna make sure we're gonna square everything up. So we don't wanna open it up and open it up. We wanna stay square to both shots so we're just creating sort of a brush stroke that has less cut, a cut across potential because if you're a high handicapper, chances are you're already cutting across the ball. You don't need any help doing that. So make sure you get yourself left enough to utilize the wind and the slope. Play the ball sort of middle of your stance without any lift. You, remember, you gotta make that sound if you're not quite hitting the same spot on the turf, it's okay because we've got a more forgiving wedge in our hands. You're not trying to hit this ball high. You're just trying to brush it and let the loft of the club do the work for you. We're gonna to try to keep it penetrating and low and rolling onto that green surface. So let's go ahead and get ourselves set up here, making sure we've got plenty of space. Our arms are fully out in front of us. And again, we're just brushing through, trying to dump it onto the green. If we start to lift and we get our body moving up, we're gonna fat it or thin it right here into this bunker. And now instead of making a possible two stroke change here, we've brought three or four into play. So it's essential to know what your wedge is capable of doing before you start attempting one of these low handicap shots as a high handicapper. All right, all you out there in the My Pro Golfer channel world, thank you for watching this how to play golf and navigate the short game area for a high handicap player and a low handicap player. Let's just go back over what the essentials are. If you're terrified of the bunker, I promise that fear is gonna negatively affect this shot. So just put it out towards the fringe, put it up to your flag, make a three from here instead of making a four, five, or six. That's where the high handicappers get their problems is they pull off a shot that they just haven't worked on. 
if you want to work on it, get yourself a, a forgiving wedge that will your miss hits, your toe hits, your, your body hits will, will take and get dumped onto the green. Don't do too much. Don't open it up. Don't close it. Just get it square to square with that brushing stroke. A forgiving wedge is going to help you get it up onto the green, giving yourself a chance to make two from here versus the three that the putt to the fringe and the putt on most likely will in endure. And then if you want to get a little bit more technical, get yourself a very difficult wedge to play, but it uh, gives you a lot of options on how to play. You can open it a little bit, you can close it a little bit, you can hit different types of shots around the green. And honestly, as you develop into becoming a high handicap player down to a low handicap player, practicing these shots are essential. So I've sort of showed you how to do it today and picking the right club and option for you to bring yourself from that high handicap player down to the scratch player that we all desperately want to be. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did like it, if you like it, subscribe. We'll see you next Thursday at six o'clock.